Today, I am going to be doing quesa tacos with birria made in a crock pot. This is a highly requested video from you guys since last year, so I decided I had some beef shanks in my freezer and I wanted to make it. Here's how I do it. Okay, so today I am making quesa tacos. You guys have requested this, so I'm going to do it because I found beef shank in my deep freezer that needs to be used. So guess what I'm doing today? I'm going to be making birria. So here I have a little over three pounds of beef shank that I basically browned on the stovetop. I added oil to a well preheated pan on high and I browned these on each side for about a minute or so, or until I got some browning color on them. So I'm going to add my browned beef shank to my 4.5 quart crock pot. My favorite way to cook meats is in the crock pot. And I know a lot of you guys love the instant pot. You can do it there too. Follow the beef stew setting that's there on your instant pot and that should do the trick. I love slow cooking. Okay, a little over three, uh, three pounds of beef shank meat. You could also use uh, chuck roast, but my favorite cut is beef shank. All right, so I am going to be using, you'll wanna use one small onion. And in my last video, I sauteed it in a pan and kind of uh, cooked the puree and everything. I'm skipping that step. I'm trying to get things done today. So, uh, and you know what? I typically like to add one small onion, but I only had one small onion and I wanna save some fresh onion for later. So I'm gonna also add some <laughs> minced onion that I found in my pantry. It's a, so yeah, but definitely dice or slice one small onion. Here I have five cloves of garlic. I also have a chili puree. I used, in this puree, I used three wajillo chilies, one pasilla chili, and one ancho chili. I removed the seeds and the stems, gave it a rinse, put it in a pot of water, brought it to a boil, turned off the heat, covered it with a lid, and I let it steep for about 20 minutes until softened. Then I removed it from the soaking liquid. I don't like to use the soaking liquid because I find that it leaves a bitter aftertaste. That's just my preference. So I removed the, the softened chilies from the soaking liquid into my blender cup. I added also, because I'm going rogue for my own recipe, I also added one chipotle uh, pepper in there and adobo sauce. I added one and one cup of water uh, to the blender cup and gave it a blend or pureed it. And that's my chili puree. So going in and I'm actually going to run it through my fine, my fine wire mesh to get rid of anything that just didn't. But you probably don't have to do that. You can just add it all into your, your crock pot. Okay, so now I'm going to add, um, we'll do a tablespoon. Mm, that was like a tablespoon and a half of beef bouillon powder. You can just use your own beef broth in place of the bouillon powder and the water that I'm gonna add later, but I like to do that. So I'm also going to add two bay leaves. Yeah, two bay leaves. And I'm kind of eyeballing this, so check the description below for the recipe. Um, let's do, I don't want that much. Yeah, that'll do. A teaspoon of Mexican oregano to go in. Um, now, here's where I kind of, I've been eyeballing a lot of stuff, but um, really the flavor's up to you. If you have fresh thyme, that works. I'm gonna give a little shake, maybe a half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon of dried thyme. You can use your just a sprig of fresh thyme will work. And here's the other thing I like to add. Mm, I like the way it smells. So here I have some, um, ground cinnamon powder and it's literally just like that just a little a little just pinch of that maybe an eighth of a teaspoon works and I did not have ground clove so I took whole cloves and I ground it up in my little mortar and pestle 
so I'm just going to take, again, just, I don't even think this is an eighth of a teaspoon. It's just a pinch, a pinch of this. Clove is very aromatic, so if you really go crazy with the cinnamon and the clove, well, good luck to you, unless you really like that. Um, but just a pinch of clove, a pinch of ground cinnamon. And let's see, what else do I have? Ah, a teaspoon and a half of salt. A lot of this is to taste, but that's what I'm starting with. And if it needs more, I'll just add more later. So that's that. Now, now I'm going to add one quart of water. That's around four cups of water, by the way. Get this little. So, I think with the puree and the four cups of water, that's it's pretty good. So cover it with your lid. I'm gonna set it to high, and this is going to cook on high for four to six hours. I'm probably gonna let it go the full five, uh, six hours. I really want things to be tender. And during, maybe once or twice during the cooking process, I'll give it a stir. And that's that. Okay, so I'm going to make a salsa. So here I have eight chile arpol. These are spicy chilies that I've removed the stems. And I removed most of the seeds, but in some of them I left the seeds in because it is going to give it more spice. I'm going to let this um, come up to a boil and let it simmer and boil for about a minute or so. I'm going to shut off the heat and let them steep until softened. That'll take around 20 minutes or so. I'm also going to be adding two Roma tomatoes, one clove of garlic, and just a little piece of onion that I've chopped. Okay, I have all of my soaked chiles, my chile arbol in with my chopped tomato, garlic, and onion. I also reserved half a cup of the soaking liquid. That's going in. And I'm going to add a little bit of chicken tomato bouillon powder. Bouillon powder here. Uh, maybe like a half teaspoon. This is a small. Just like that. My salsa is pureed. So now in a preheated pan with a little bit of oil. I'm using some of the oil that rendered from the birria. Now you'll just want to add this to your pan and just let it simmer for about five minutes and your salsa is done. Okay, so I have about 30 more minutes left to go, but this is already falling off the bone. I'm gonna start skimming off this fat. The fat off the top of this broth is what's going to help uh, fry or crisp our quesa tacos that we're gonna make later, so. And you'll also, like halfway uh, during the cooking process, it was right around three hours in, I tasted it for salt and seasoning, and I actually added a little more of beef bouillon powder and a pinch of salt. I'll put what I used in the description below, but ultimately I did use two tablespoons of the beef bouillon flavoring or powder in this and just a little dash of salt and it was perfect. But things like salt and seasoning are to your preference, so just make sure to taste your broth. Skim off most of the fat on top. And if some of the broth gets into the fat, that's okay. It'll be okay. But get just the fat off the top works. Okay, so I've removed most of the fat. Remove the meat, which is falling off the bone. So I've removed all the meat from the bones and now I'm just going to chop it. Okay, my meat is chopped. Give that a mix, and now I'm going to add, I'm gonna leave some meat out, like I said, for the tacos. I'm only gonna be making, um, I think that's enough for about six tacos. One, two, yeah, that should be enough for my quesa tacos. I'm not making tons. By the way, this recipe that I'm making today is gonna at least serve three to four people. It's not a giant amount. So if you're looking to make this for a large group, you're probably going to want to triple or quadruple this and cook it in a very large crock pot or slow cooker or do it in a pot on your stove. Okay, so, and I'm going to keep this turned on high. I've already taken the bay leaves out and just let that continue to simmer and just slow cook until you're ready to eat it to this. This is what I'm going to serve in the, a, a small bowl. I have my shredded cheese. 
I have corn tortillas and my chopped up meat with the rendered fat. I am going to, let's do this first. And I'm filming and doing this guys, I'm doing this like one handed. So I'm gonna scoop up some of that fat right onto the griddle. Give it a flip. I'm just going to use my clean hands, guys. I'm going in with my meat and my cheese. There we go. And if some of the cheese gets on the griddle, it's okay. It's going to form kind of like a crust. There we go. That's one. And I'm going to let this just cook on a medium heat till it's crispy on both sides. I'm going to do the other one. I'm probably going to add a little more oil for it to cook in, but that's it. You'll want to cook this till it gets nice and crispy on the outside and melty on the inside. Okay, so here I have two quesa tacos, very toasty on the outside, melty, cheesy, deliciousness on the inside. I've served a bowl of that broth. And to garnish, I've already added a little bit of cilantro, but I'll add some onion, cilantro, some chopped scallion is mixed in there. Oops. And I'll add a little bit of lime juice. And before I forget, my salsa. Now the salsa is spicy, so use it wisely there. Don't go overboard, unless you really like spicy stuff. Give that a mix. And I'm going to taste the broth. Mmm. Oh man, that's good. Okay, this is hot, but I'm going in. Oh. Mm. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.